Hey guys, welcome back to the Art of Craftsmanship. My name is Dustin, and today in the shop we're going to be making a Viking axe. Now I'm going to be using an old axe head. This is one that I have that has a crack in the cheek, and so it's actually a perfect axe head to modify, but this is also something that you guys could do at home with any old axe head that you find, or a new axe head that you buy from a store. Now I'm going to be making my handle as well from scratch, probably do some carving on the handle as well as some leather work, uh, and then I'll do some laser engraving on the head to kind of give it that fun details of Viking style. Um, now this is part of the YouTube Knife Maker Challenge Viking Edition, and I'll link everybody else's videos as well as the voting link, but we'll talk about that later in the video. For now, let's start designing this axe head. Now I want to modify this head. There's a few things I want to do. One is I want to make the eye a little shorter, um, and then I'm going to remove some material on the top of the head as well as the bottom going out to the toe and to the heel. So I'm trying to be a little bit accurate to the time period, but also a fun shape that people recognize as a Viking accent shape. So kind of balancing both a fun look and a historically accurate look. this at this point real aggressive and chunky looking but I'm gonna head over to the grinder now and clean up all this down to my lines clean up the mushroom on the pole and then I'll decide what I want to do with the surface I'm thinking I'm gonna go ahead and clean it all off because that will be the best surface for the etching with the laser but we'll kind of decide in a moment The more I'm looking at this, uh, the more I see the difference between the ground steel and the, the patinaed face. And, you know, I want this to look like a Viking axe at the end, and the Vikings wouldn't have modified an axe. I mean, they may have, but really they would have forged it out this way. So having the two different, the raw steel and then the patina steel doesn't really look right. doesn't look the part. So I think I have a couple, I have some sandpaper discs here and some grinding discs. I'm going to go ahead and hit the surface, work it up to a point where I think it's kind of all even the same. That's what I'm looking for. Um, just the, the, an even aesthetic across the whole axe head.
It still has some life to it because there's still some pitting in the surface, which I think is kind of cool. Um, some you can kind of see the history of some scratch marks and things like that, which I think those all work with you know an axe that would have had some life to it, that would have been forged, that would have been ground, would have been shaped, um, and then used. So. I think I like the texture. I like the history that's kind of being built into the texture on the surface. And uh, yeah, I'm really, I'm really pleased with it so far. So I'm ready to move on to the next part. I spent a little bit of time working up my designs for the etch on both sides of the ax head. I started with just some sketches of, general sketches of the shape of the axe head and worked up a few designs. I knew I wanted to have kind of the four way squirrely cross. So I want to have that on the eye of the axe head on both sides. I wanted to incorporate the AOC logo as well because it is a runic logo. And so I wanted to incorporate that into the axe head. Once I kind of came up with my designs, I moved over into Photoshop and then I bumped up the contrast and kind of cleaned it up a little bit and added some cool texture in the background that'll add like a nice contrast to it. You know, I wanted to match the AOC runes with actually Viking runes. So on the opposite side, we'll have the three runes here, which are kind of the, the warrior runes that I came up with that I thought work well for a, an, a Viking axe. So we have Nothis, which is need, self-reliance or survival. Uh, Fehu, which is wealth, abundance, and luck. And then Algiz, which is the elk, which is the protection or a ward off of evil. So all three things I thought would be good for any Viking warrior to have on their axe. All right, that looks pretty good. Start, confirm, yes. Is it a little too high, maybe? It looks like we're about halfway done the first etch and it's been about 10 minutes. So I'm gonna let that continue. And while that's etching, I'm gonna move over to this table just so we don't bump this or mess up the etch. And while we're over here, we're gonna lay out the handle. Now I wanna do, I'm thinking maybe like a two foot handle, maybe 28 inches, 29 inches, something like in that style. So we'll go ahead and start laying out the dimensions on here figure out how we want that to work while this is finishing up and then we'll kind of go back and forth between taking a look at that, getting this cut out and ready to go so we can start shaping this while this is etching. All right, this is done. It looks good. Everything looks pretty even for this test etch. I'll shift it just a tiny bit. Actually, I'll just do it right now. Okay. That should be good. Here we go. That I like. That's really cool looking. Makes me almost wish I was able to like just do big grooves of a whole bunch of patterns all the way around it. I do like the etching, but those are cool looking. Nice.
that. Luna, what are you doing? Hey, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing down here? Hello. Okay, go ahead. What is this weird glue plug? There we go. Hello. I closed it. Looking wedge. Sweet. This is pretty close to being finished. Final dimensions. I just need to round over uh, all the like, facets and edges and just and sand it up and kind of finesse it as I go. I want the surface to dry pretty quick so I can then do the leather over top of it and I'm going to be super gluing the leather on. I don't want a really oily finish so I'm actually thinking about doing just an acrylic dye over the whole thing to get that nice dark brown. Then I can do the leather and then oil the whole thing at the end. When you're doing an acrylic stain like this using acrylic paints, the key is to make sure you're doing it really thin because you want it to stain the wood but not sit on top. So you just thin it out. So I'm gonna mix my colors first and get the right color that I want. And then I'll add water to it to thin it out. That way when I brush it on, it just penetrates inside and sits on top and we'll still be able to see the wood grain coming through. Let's see what we like. Yeah, that's nice. Darkens it up, warm, but darker. That's what I'm looking for. Then I can kind of put it in different areas to darken it up in different areas where it would be worn more.
little bit darker around the top. Just slightly more up here. I'm kind of applying this and then kind of brushing it off as I go so it'll build up layers, just like a stain. Ready to do, thinking about process and order of operations, I'm ready to do the leather. So I'm gonna go and pull the tape off of the faces. I'll do the top first and come down here. And then once I get that done, then I'll come down to the bottom and do the handle, which I'll probably do about eight or 10 inches tall. So a nice two-handed handle. And kind of hold the top as well. Some Jad Wax and put this over just to coat the whole surface before I do the leather wrapping. And it also works really nicely to make that design pop. Gel. How jelly is the gel? Pretty jelly. This thing turned out super cool. I love it. You guys saw me do the handle wrap, and since then I spent a couple days doing a couple coats of boiled linseed oil as well as some wax over the whole thing to really make sure it was protected and sealed well because I knew I was going into the water. You guys saw me come in and out of that water with this axe, and it's held up really well. All the leather looks really good. The wood's good. The grain didn't pop, so I'm really happy with that. But it's all those details that have come together that I think really make this cool. The modification of the head, the details of the etching, the runes and the leather, it's just a cool piece and I'm super excited about it. Now this is our submission into the YouTube Knife Maker Challenge Viking Edition. You can check out all the other competitors as well. They'll be linked in the description below. Check them out, let them know what you think, give them some love. Come back over and find our voting link in the description below as well and vote for us because this thing is awesome. I love it. It turned out really cool and uh, you know, can't beat a Viking axe. So thank you guys all so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.